Humans can perceive a wide range of colors, but there are some hues that are literally impossible for us to see. These impossible colors don't appear in the typical spectrum of visible light. They're not just rare or hard to describe, our eyes and brains are physically incapable of processing them under normal circumstances. One major reason for this is the way our color vision works. We have three types of cone cells in our eyes, each sensitive to a different range of wavelengths. Our brain interprets the signals from these cells in an opponent manner. That means there are certain color pairs like red and green or blue and yellow that can't be perceived together in the same place at the same time. But that doesn't stop us from imagining or describing impossible colors. Lots of color spaces and models, often used in computer graphics and printing, actually include these imaginary hues. They exist in the math, even if we can't see them directly. By pushing the boundaries of these color spaces, we can achieve more vibrant and saturated images, even if some hues remain theoretical. There are also some fascinating quirks of our visual system that let us perceive impossible colors in very specific situations. By overloading certain cone cells through intense staring at colored images, we can see colors that are deeper, brighter, or stranger than anything in the normal visual world. Some people have even trained themselves to see forbidden mixtures like reddish green or yellowish blue. Fiction writers love playing with the idea of impossible colors too. Lovecraft's The Color Out of Space, Pratchett's Octarine, and the Futurama episode Reincarnation all imagine hues beyond the limits of human perception. These stories use impossible colors to hint at alien wonders, magical realities, or uncharted frontiers of science and technology. The boundaries of color vision reveal how much of our experience is constrained by our biology. And yet, the fact that we can even talk about impossible colors shows how our imaginations are always reaching beyond those limits into uncharted territory. In the Catholic and Orthodox traditions, there's a fascinating belief that divine intervention can allow the bodies of certain holy individuals to avoid the normal process of decomposition after death. This phenomenon is known as incorruptibility, and it's seen as a sign of the person's saintliness. Incorruptible bodies are said to remain intact even when exposed to conditions that would normally hasten decay. The church has a specific process for verifying incorruptibility involving careful inspections by bishops and other officials. If a body is deemed incorruptible, the remains may be placed in a special reliquary for veneration by the faithful. Incorruptibility is considered distinct from mummification or unusually good preservation. In some cases, the bodies are reported to give off a sweet floral scent known as the odor of sanctity. However, the church no longer counts incorruptibility as a miracle when determining sainthood. Many famous saints are said to have incorruptible bodies, and pilgrims often travel to see these remains. The body of Saint Bernadette, for instance, was examined multiple times and found to be preserved, although her face and hands are covered with a wax mask. In the Eastern Orthodox tradition, incorruptibility is also well known, though it's not a requirement for sainthood. Many Orthodox saints' bodies are reportedly incorrupt and are deeply revered by believers. Some examples include Saint Alexander of Svir, whose relics were hidden for decades before being returned to their monastery, and Saint John Maximovich, an archbishop known for his holiness and miracles. Whether through divine grace or some as yet unknown natural process, the bodies of these holy men and women endure as a physical reminder of their spiritual purity. For the devout, incorruptible saints offer a tangible connection to the sacred mysteries at the heart of their beliefs. According to a New Age concept, there are certain children, known as indigo children, who are believed to possess special or even supernatural traits and abilities. This idea originated in the 1970s with a parapsychologist who claimed to notice children being born with indigo-colored auras. The concept gained popularity in the late 1990s with a series of books and later films on the topic. Beliefs about indigo children range from them being the next stage in human evolution to simply being more empathetic and creative than their peers. Supposed characteristics of indigo children include high intelligence, strong-willed nature, inherent intuitive or spiritual abilities, and a feeling of being different and not fitting into conventional structures. 
Parents may find the indigo label an appealing alternative to a medical or psychiatric diagnosis for children exhibiting challenging behaviors. However, the traits associated with indigo children are often so vague and general that they could apply to almost anyone. Many children labeled as indigo are diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and some critics argue the indigo label may delay proper treatment. The concept has generated a commercial industry of books, videos, and counseling services, leading to criticism that it exploits parents and children for profit. Some also see it as a new religious movement, using ideas of spiritually gifted children to reject mainstream medicine and parenting advice. While the idea of indigo children resonates with some who seek a positive vision of children's potential, it remains a controversial and scientifically unsubstantiated theory. Regardless, it continues to capture imaginations as an intriguing, if unproven, notion within the New Age community. The idea goes that if you had an infinite number of monkeys randomly pounding away on typewriters for an infinite amount of time, eventually they would almost surely type out the complete works of Shakespeare, or any other text for that matter. In fact, the monkeys would churn out every possible combination of letters over and over again, including the entire contents of the Library of Congress and your own life story, down to the minutest detail. The metaphor isn't meant to be taken literally, of course. It's a thought experiment that encapsulates some of the key concepts of probability theory. The main takeaway is that even infinitesimally unlikely events are bound to happen sooner or later in an infinite universe, but that's not to say astronomically improbable events are likely to occur in any time frame relevant to our everyday experience. For instance, even if every particle in the observable universe were a monkey typing from the Big Bang until the present day, the odds of getting even a single page of Shakespeare right would be vanishingly small. Any specific set of letters is equally improbable, whether it's the bard's immortal words or gibberish. So while the infinite monkey theorem makes for a memorable illustration of the nature of infinity and chance, it's really more of a mathematical oddity than a practical insight. Real monkeys aren't very good at random typing anyway. In a famous experiment, six monkeys with a keyboard produced only a handful of pages, mostly filled with the letter S, and they kept bashing the device with rocks for good measure. But the whimsical image of simian scribes scribbling away for eternity has proven irresistible to generations of writers and thinkers since long before typewriters were invented. It's a vivid reminder of the sheer scope of the possible, even if most of it remains forever out of reach, for monkeys and humans alike. In the age of information, a new kind of organism has emerged, the INFORG, short for Informationally Embodied Organism. These entities are made up not of flesh and blood, but of pure information. They inhabit a realm known as the Infosphere, alongside traditional biological beings and artificial intelligences. According to some thinkers, all living things can be understood as patterns of what's called Shannon information, a concept that brings the abstract notion of information into the tangible domain of physics. By this logic, even a human being is at core an informational entity, our cells and experiences encoded in complex biological networks. The idea goes even further, suggesting that an organism's true identity lies not in its temporary material form, but in this essential informational pattern. So while our physical bodies change over time, in a sense our inner inforg persists. Some have even speculated that the DNA molecule itself, the supposed building block of life, could serve as a vast storage medium for digital data, a literal blurring of the boundary between biology and information. In this view, the metaphysical essence of life is in formation and pattern rather than matter and energy. We are all in forgs, whether we recognize it or not, adrift in an ever-shifting infosphere. It's a heady and abstract notion, but one that captures something of the uncanny nature of existence in an age when the virtual increasingly seems to merge with the real. The concept of the inforg asks us to see ourselves and our world anew, as ripples in a vast sea of information, at once embodied and ephemeral. In our increasingly digital world, a strange new creature has been proposed, the Infovore. As the name suggests, these hypothetical entities would feed not on physical matter, but on pure information itself. 
data, knowledge, ideas, these would be the sustenance that nourishes the infovore. It's a concept that speaks to the growing sense that information has become a resource as vital as food or energy. We often speak of consuming media, after all, as if taking in information were a kind of metabolic process. The infovore takes this metaphor to its logical extreme, imagining organisms that have evolved to thrive on the vast oceans of data that now suffuse our environment. Of course, no one has ever seen an infovore in the wild. The idea remains firmly in the realm of thought experiment and speculation. But it's not hard to see the appeal of the concept. In a world increasingly shaped by the flow of bits and bytes, perhaps it's only natural to wonder if new forms of life might emerge to exploit this novel ecological niche. The notion of the infovore also highlights the blurring boundary between the physical and the informational. As we've come to realize, the essence of a living thing may have as much to do with patterns and processes as with tangible stuff. An infovore, in this sense, would simply be taking this idea to its logical conclusion, a being of pure information, thriving in a habitat of pure data. It's a strange and heady concept, but one that captures something of the uncanny nature of life in the digital age. The infovore may never venture beyond the pages of science fiction, but as a thought experiment, it asks us to reconsider what it means to be alive in an increasingly data-soaked world. Contrary to popular belief, not everyone has a constant inner monologue, that little voice in your head that narrates your thoughts and experiences. For some people, the inner landscape is less verbal and more abstract. Rather than engaging in self-talk or mentally complaining about tasks, they simply feel their emotions without putting them into words. This absence of an inner monologue can make verbal communication more challenging for these individuals. They often need to take extra time to translate their thoughts and feelings into language, a process that doesn't come automatically. Many find that writing helps bridge this gap, allowing them to organize their ideas in a more structured way. On the other end of the spectrum are those whose inner lives are dominated by constant verbal chatter. For them, the idea of thinking without words is almost inconceivable. Emotions and experiences are inextricably tied to a running stream of mental commentary, often including elements of self-talk and inner dialogue. Research suggests that there's a wide range of variation in how people experience their inner worlds. Some minds are abuzz with frequent conversation, while others are mostly silent. And inner voices can take many forms beyond just words, images, physical sensations, even tastes and smells. What feels normal and natural for one person may be utterly alien to another. Understanding these differences can help us communicate better and be more empathetic to those whose inner lives don't match the standard template. It's a small insight, but one that hints at the vast complexity and variability of the world inside our heads. In the heart of California's Mojave Desert, not far from Joshua Tree, stands a striking dome-shaped structure known as the Integratron. Rising several stories high, this circular building was the brainchild of a man named George Van Tassel, a former aircraft mechanic turned ufologist and contactee. According to Van Tassel, the blueprints for the Integratron were given to him directly by extraterrestrial visitors from Venus during a series of telepathic contacts and in-person encounters. He claimed that the building, when completed, would be capable of amazing feats like rejuvenation, anti-gravity, and even time travel. Construction on the structure began in the late 1950s and was largely funded by donations, including money from the famous aviator and eccentric billionaire Howard Hughes. The main structure was completed just before the 1960s, but Van Tassel continued to tinker with the machine until his death in the late 1970s. The building's supposed powers rely on a device called a multiple wave oscillator, which combines a high voltage Tesla coil and a split ring resonator to generate a wide range of electromagnetic frequencies. Van Tassel believed that these frequencies could recharge living cells, much like an electrical battery. After passing through several owners and periods of disrepair, the Integratron is now operated as a tourist attraction. The current owners, a group of sisters, promote the building as an acoustically perfect structure and offer sound baths, 
where visitors are bathed in the tones produced by quartz bowls, said to have a profoundly calming effect. While mainstream science may be skeptical of the alleged abilities, there's no denying the building's striking presence and the sense of mystery that surrounds it. The idea that UFO sightings might be the result of encounters with beings from other dimensions, rather than extraterrestrial visitors, has been around for a long time. This concept, known as the interdimensional hypothesis, suggests that there are other realities or planes of existence that coexist separately alongside our own, and that the occupants of UFOs may come from these alternate realms. The roots of this idea can be traced back to 19th century spiritualism and theosophy, which popularized concepts like etheric planes and bodies, but it wasn't until the flying saucer craze of the 1940s that these notions were explicitly connected to UFO phenomena. One early proponent was an occultist who claimed that the saucers were etheric vehicles, capable of materializing and dematerializing as they passed between different levels of reality. He believed their pilots were human-like beings from another world, coming to Earth with benevolent intentions. By the 1970s, the interdimensional hypothesis was gaining more traction among UFO enthusiasts. Some researchers argued that the wide variety of paranormal and anomalous experiences reported throughout history, from fairy encounters to phantom airships, were all manifestations of this same interdimensional phenomenon cloaked in the cultural guises of different eras. The idea was further developed by prominent figures in ufology. Two in particular speculated that our universe might be interlocked with others operating by different physical laws, and that UFOs and their occupants could be crossing over from these adjacent realities, perhaps without even requiring spacecraft as we understand them. While the extraterrestrial hypothesis remains the most popular explanation for UFOs in the public imagination, the interdimensional hypothesis continues to be discussed and debated by those seeking alternative possibilities. It has also inspired or intersected with various fictional depictions of ancient astronauts, time travel, and higher dimensions in popular culture. As with any theory about the ultimately unknown, the interdimensional hypothesis remains speculative and controversial, but for its proponents, it offers a potential framework for making sense of the often bizarre and inexplicable aspects of UFO reports and related phenomena. At the very least, it challenges our assumptions about the nature of reality and the potential forms that intelligence and visitation might take in a truly strange universe. The Church of Scientology has a controversial procedure known as the Introspection Rundown, which is intended to handle severe mental breakdowns or psychotic episodes in its members. According to Scientology teachings, someone in this state is looking into one's own mind, feelings, reactions, etc. without end, and the goal is to make them extroverted and no longer trapped in this inward-looking condition. The procedure begins by isolating the person completely with attendants who are not allowed to speak to them. The person is then given frequent auditing sessions, which are a core practice in Scientology. They remain in isolation until it's determined that they are no longer psychotic and are capable of responsibly interacting with others again. Administering this rundown requires extensive training in Scientology principles and methods. The Scientology founder claimed it must be performed very precisely, as any mistakes could make the person's condition worse. He also touted it as a major breakthrough that would render psychiatry obsolete. The introspection rundown gained notoriety in the mid-1990s after the death of a Scientologist who had been put through the procedure. She had become psychologically disturbed after a car accident and was placed in isolation for over two weeks. When she died, her appearance suggested severe neglect and deprivation during that time. This case brought the introspection rundown and its methods under intense public scrutiny. The Church of Scientology vigorously denied any wrongdoing in this incident. However, it now requires members to sign a waiver before undergoing the procedure, releasing the church from liability for any injury or death that may result. The introspection rundown remains a highly controversial practice, with many critics arguing it is dangerous and unethical, while Scientology continues to defend it as an effective treatment for severe mental distress. 
According to some scientists, a mysterious force might be at work in the cosmos, creating what are essentially invisible walls in space. These aren't solid barriers you could touch, but rather a kind of cosmic corralling of galaxies into unexpected arrangements. The standard model of cosmology predicts that small galaxies should orbit larger ones in messy, random patterns, but observations have shown that many of these tiny galaxies are instead arranged in neat, flat planes around their larger hosts, almost like the rings of Saturn. It's as if some unseen structure is holding them in these orderly configurations. Over the years, astronomers have puzzled over this satellite disk problem and proposed various explanations. But a new study suggests a mind-bending possibility, that hypothetical particles called symmetrons are generating these galaxy-guiding effects. The researchers call the resulting structures domain walls and argue they could explain the perplexingly synchronized orbits of galaxies. What's especially intriguing about this idea is that it doesn't require completely abandoning dark matter, the invisible substance thought to make up most of the universe's mass. Instead, it introduces new particles that would interact with dark matter to create these cosmic walls. Of course, this is all highly speculative at this point. To prove that invisible walls are shaping galaxies, we'd first need to confirm that symmetrons actually exist. That's where cutting-edge observatories like the James Webb Space Telescope could come in, potentially detecting signs of these elusive particles in the early universe. It's a fascinating possibility that injects even more mystery and wonder into our understanding of the cosmos. The idea that unseen forces are not just holding galaxies together, but arranging them in orderly arrays like some vast cosmic architect hints at the profound strangeness and beauty that may yet await our discovery in the depths of space. In the midst of the swirling geopolitical turmoil of the early 2000s, a peculiar theory emerged, that the United States' invasion of Iraq was motivated not just by concerns over weapons of mass destruction or regional stability, but by a quest for an ancient and powerful artifact, a Stargate. According to this idea, hidden beneath the ruins of the fabled city of Babylon lies a portal to other dimensions, perhaps even other galaxies. Whispers tell of its discovery in an inverted underground pyramid uncovered by explorers or archaeologists in the early 20th century. The notion is that the highest echelons of the US government were privy to the Stargate's existence and coveted the unimaginable power it could bestow upon those who controlled it. Mastery over interdimensional travel, contact with extraterrestrial civilizations, access to transformative technologies, all of these and more, some say, could be granted by the Babylonian Gate. Of course, this theory is not one that's widely accepted or officially acknowledged. It lives on the fringes, a tantalizing what-if scenario that weaves together ancient mythology, modern geopolitics, and the perennial human fascination with the possibility of worlds beyond our own. According to some accounts, when the remains of a notorious Russian ruler from centuries ago were exhumed in the 1960s, scientists made a startling discovery. Embedded in the skull was a small metal object, about the size of a coin, that resembled a sophisticated electronic device. Based on the bone growth around this curious artifact, it was theorized that it may have been implanted during the ruler's childhood. Some researchers speculated that the device could have enhanced the individual's mental capabilities, but also caused the uncontrollable rages and violent behavior they were infamous for. Taking the idea even further, one researcher suggested the mysterious implant allowed the ruler to be controlled by extraterrestrial beings. He claimed that the despot was visited by strange humanoid figures in private. Of course, these fringe theories are not widely accepted by mainstream historians, the idea of ancient alien implants manipulating major figures reads more like science fiction than sober historical analysis. And the ruler's famously cruel and erratic behavior could be explained by a host of more mundane factors, from a tumultuous upbringing to the unchecked power of their position. Still, the account of the bizarre skull implant adds an extra layer of dark mystique to a life already steeped in legend and infamy. It's a reminder that for all our historical knowledge, there are still mysteries and oddities that can make us wonder about the stranger possibilities on the edges of the human story. 
Whether the product of advanced ancient technology or the ravings of an unsound mind, the tyrant's tale remains an unsettling enigma centuries later. Jack the Ripper was an unidentified serial killer who brutally murdered a number of women in London's poverty-stricken Whitechapel district in 1888. The killer targeted female prostitutes, slashing their throats and mutilating their bodies in a disturbingly precise manner, in some cases removing internal organs. This led to speculation that the perpetrator may have had anatomical or surgical knowledge. A media frenzy erupted around the case after a series of taunting letters claiming to be from the murderer were sent to police and media outlets. The moniker Jack the Ripper originated from one of these letters, capturing the public's imagination and bestowing an enduring notoriety on the unknown killer. The heavy press coverage and the murderer's uncanny ability to elude identification by London's police force led to a legendary status that persists to this day. Dozens of theories about Jack the Ripper's true identity have been proposed over the years, but the case remains one of the world's most famous unsolved murder mysteries. Jacobo Greenberg, known as the Einstein of Consciousness, was a renowned figure in the study of the human mind who mysteriously disappeared in 1994, leaving behind an unsolved puzzle. As a professor and director of a cutting-edge laboratory in Mexico, Greinberg explored unconventional areas of research, including telepathy and other aspects of psychophysiology. His disappearance has been investigated by authorities, but the circumstances remain shrouded in mystery, with his story spanning various locations across the globe. Greenberg's multifaceted background included ventures into pseudoscience, neurophysiology, and psychology, as he studied Mexican shamanism, Eastern practices, meditation, astrology, and telepathy through his unique scientific approach. His fascination with the human mind was deeply influenced by a personal tragedy, the loss of his mother to a brain tumor when he was just 12 years old. Grinberg pursued his education in psychology and psychophysiology, earning a PhD from the Brain Research Institute in New York City. In Mexico, Greenberg established psychophysiology laboratories and founded the Instituto Nacional para el Estudio de la Conciencia in PEC, where he published numerous books on topics ranging from brain activity to witchcraft, shamanism, telepathy, and meditation. His unconventional approach to combining science and shamanism drew both intrigue and skepticism from the scientific community as he aimed to bridge the gap between scientific inquiry and the mystical world. On December 8, 1994, Jacobo Greenberg vanished without a trace, failing to appear for his birthday celebration a few days later. His disappearance sparked a host of conspiracy theories and remains a mystery to this day. One of Greinberg's notable theories, the Synergy Theory, proposed the existence of a continuous energy space beyond human perception, challenging our understanding of how experiences are created. This concept gained international recognition through his book El Cerebro Consciente, which was translated into multiple languages. Jacobo Grinberg's enigmatic disappearance and his unconventional approach to consciousness studies continue to captivate minds and intrigue those who seek to unravel the mysteries of the human mind and the boundaries of reality.